Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're going to be finally looking at the third form of an equation of a plane. So we can answer questions from exercise 9D. This is the part two of four videos. So if, you'd, if you've been watching this series on vectors here, you'll have seen two forms of planes so far. You'll have seen the vector form, which is R equals A plus lambda B plus plus mu c. You'll have seen um, this vector form here. You'll have also seen the Cartesian form which was n1x plus n2y plus n3z equals k where n1, n2 and n3 are the perpendicular, is the perpendicular vector uh, to the plane. Well, what we're going to look at now is the scalar product form of a vector. So we'll have a look at this first and we'll first show you how this comes about. So if we've got our normal vector here, we've got n1, n2, n3, um, and we can define the plane by this vector here. We also need to know a point on the plane to get the full answer for that type of equation there. So we've got a1, a2 and a3 as any random point on that plane. And R will set as a variable point, and the variable point represents any of the coordinates that can be on our plane. So x, y, z. Um, the vector A to R lies on the plane, so it is a straight line that goes along the plane in all points. Um, so by definition, it must be perpendicular to the normal vector. It does not matter where you put A and R, but they will be perpendicular. Uh, this means that the dot product of the normal vector and the vector A to R is zero. Why is it zero? Well, because the theta angle will equal 90 degrees, and in your a dot b equals mod a mod b cos theta formula, you'll get a dot b equals zero. So the dot product will equal zero because theta is 90 degrees. Now, if we set a as this coordinate here and r as this coordinate here, um, and we connect the two together, then the direction vector from a to r will be perpendicular to the direction vector of n and the two dotted together will give us um, a zero no matter where we put it okay so if we start off by working out what a to r is now r is any point on the plane so we have to still leave in x y and z there so it's going to be x minus a1 y minus a2 z minus a3 dotted with our perpendicular vector n1, n2, n3 here and the dot product will equal zero because there's a right angle there. It's by definition it's set up as a right angle and by the rule of dot product if your theta angle is 90 degrees your dot product equals zero. Dot product this all out so n1 times uh, x minus a1 and dot product it all out. Uh, split up the uh, subtraction here into two separate vectors and then split up the multiplication of this um, with a, a dot product as well okay so just like we have here and then move the subtracted part onto the other side so n1 n2 n3 dotted with xyz equals n1 n2 n3 dotted with a1 a2 a3 and we're virtually there now now what we'll do is we'll simplify um, this rule here where you do n1 times a1 uh, effectively what we've got is this vector here uh, with just a1 a2 a3 as our coordinate x y z so that's d and then n1 n2 n3 that's just the n vector um, so this is now uh, just n and this here is our point r and you, what you effectively get here is exactly this thing that's on the left hand side here n1x plus n2y plus n3z equals d. So we've got this form here. Now this tidies up and we'll see it tidied up later. This is the Cartesian form and this form here that we're looking at here is the scalar product form. Okay. So this form here is generally written like this. R, we leave the letter R in there n is given to us, that's n1, n2, n3, a is given to us as well, and n is also given to us, and it appears both times in the formula. Now, you can't just cancel out n's here, unfortunately, if that's how it is, that's how the formula is, okay? So it's r dot n equals a dot n, okay? 
and generally we can simplify the a dot n here because we're given both of those in our question um, or, we, or we're asked to find them out in some way and we can do the dot product between those two vectors and we get k so this here is also how it's written as well where you can convert from one to the other by doing a dot n equals the k value there so k is just a number at the end now okay so in this question here, let's have a go at um, trying to put this into action. Given that O to A is 2, 3, minus 5, so effectively we have a coordinate A of 2, 3, minus 5, and the N vector that's perpendicular to the plane is 3, 1, minus 1, uh, with O being the fixed origin, finds an equation of the plane in scalar product form, our new form, and Cartesian form, the one that we've seen earlier. So the scalar product form looks... So yeah, the scalar product form looks like this, r dot n equals a dot n, and sub in the values we know. We know n, we know a, so just substitute those in, work out what a dot n is, if possible, and it is in this case, and we get this. This is the equation of our plane. It looks quite weird, and it does, get some, does take some getting used to, but that is an equation of a plane, okay? Um, r dot 3 1 minus 1 equals 14 and to convert this into Cartesian form all we need to do now is take this form replace r with x y z we can always replace r with x y z okay, always we can always replace r with x y z and do the dot product of it so 3 times x 1 times y minus 1 times z and set that equal to 14 and that's now the Cartesian form. So the scalar product form and the Cartesian form are really closely linked. It's really easy to convert between the two. Okay, And if we wanted to convert backwards and we didn't know this result up here, we'd just take 3, 1, minus 1 as the coefficients, and that would be our n vector. Uh, x, y, z would be the r vector, and we'd convert that into an r. So you can see here, really easy to convert between the scalar product and Cartesian form. So we have seen now all three forms of a uh, plane. We've seen the vector form, we've seen the Cartesian form, and we've seen the scalar product form, where it's really easy to convert between um, these two on the right here. Okay, it's a bit difficult to go from this to this. There is a way of doing it, and we'll show you this in a later video. Um, but this here is, is quite tricky, and this here is quite easy to convert um, between the two forms. Okay, so your turn to have a go at this question here then. It's question 2a, find in scalar product form the equation of the plane that passes through the points uh, 1, minus 1, minus 1, and is perpendicular to 2, 1, 1, hence find the Cartesian equation of the plane. Pause the video and try this one out. Alright then, so scalar product form of a plane looks like this, r dot n equals a dot n. And this thing here is obviously n because it's perpendicular to the vector, perpendicular, normal, right angle, think n. Um, and this here looks like it passes through this point here, so that's definitely the a vector. So r dot 2, 1, 1 is equal to 2, 1, 1 dotted with 1, minus 1, minus 1. And this is going to equal 2 minus 1 minus another 1. That gives us a 0. Okay, so in this case we get a 0. So our final answer for part A is going to equal r dot 2, 1, 1 equals 0. Part B will just for us look for us to expand, uh, replace r with x, y, z, and expand uh, this dot product here. So it's going to be 2x plus y plus z equals 0. Now it's fine to have an equal 0 on the right hand side. What this means is that this plane will go through the origin exactly. It will go through the 0, 0, 0 coordinate. You can check that the coordinate does work and it does satisfy the equation. So it does go through the origin. Okay, so there we are. That is the answer to this question here then. Do have a go at plenty of questions similar to this, but do remember as well, we've got two more videos to cover the full exercise 9D. Okay, thanks very much for watching.